1988, the cocaine business in America was worth $140 billion. Cocaine accounted for over 2% of the entire American gross domestic product. The crack epidemic uh, seemed to hit, and it seemed like Detroit was the epicenter uh, for uh, the crack epidemic. The crack trade has transformed small-time hoodlums into big-time entrepreneurs. It, it brought on a whole different um, complexion to the drug trade. Uh, there were a lot of shootings that would take place, a lot of violence associated with the crack trade and, and cocaine trade in, in general, even much more so than what you saw in the, in the heroin trade. And I'm not sure why that is. Young dealers can make up to 800 of weapons and readily kill to protect their children. Young people who had never seen $50 at one time now are dealing with five, 10, 20, 30, $50,000. Most of the big fellows from the 70s are locked up. I personally knew several big time targets of mine that were killed uh, before we could even get to the case where they, well, we could prosecute them. I was introduced to uh, an individual uh, by the name of Richard Worshey Sr. His son uh, was uh, white boy Rick. When I was introduced to Richard Worshey Sr., he was providing a lot of uh, street information. He began reporting more and more on drug activity. And so uh, he was going to be handed over to me to manage him as, a, as an informant. I didn't even know his name. He was a, a, drug, a white drug informant. So as I'm uh, meeting uh, with this um, potential informant uh, on the west side of uh, Detroit uh, <clears throat> at a McDonald's, um, I'm under the impression I'm just going to meet this guy. And as I walk in, I see this white guy, he's sitting there and he's got this young kid with him. Uh, and looks to me like he's 14, 15 years old. It's not totally unusual. I've, sometimes informants bring their children uh, to meetings. It's just, I know it sounds crazy, but they do. I, uh, introductions are made and um, I begin talking to uh, the father. And I began talking to him about uh, the Curry drug gang, which I had an interest in and an open case on. And I would ask him just basic intelligence about, you know, what kind of cars are they driving, where do they meet, uh, who their associates are, it's their daily activity. And I noticed that almost all the time I would uh, ask the father this, he would defer to the kid. And the kid would answer. Money, money, money! The profits were staggering, up to a million dollars a week. Authorities say the Chambers brothers who made this home video didn't even bother to count the one dollar bills because it took too long. And when I came over, he had a couple of little baby uh, white pit bulls. He had maybe about 25, 30 pistols in the house. You know, that he was showing me, actually, and matter of fact, he gave me one. I can't remember exactly which one he gave me, but he gave me one a token of his friendship. But I began picking up intel uh, that he was running his own operation. Uh, he had gone into the drug trade and uh, was, um, was uh, doing his own thing. Rick was a weight man. Rick dealt in keys. You know, if he dealt in crack houses, I had no knowledge of it whatsoever. I dealt it in crack. Basically, he had, I bought keys, but I converted it over to crack cocaine. Rick, he was the man that you would hear would get 20, 30, 40, 50, or 100 kilos of cocaine. Ultimately, uh, white boy Rick, uh, he had a catchy street name. It was an unusual situation. The media loved it. And um, every time there was a raid or anything on the news that was, they could associate with white boy Rick, uh, it was, uh, it, you saw it on the news uh, quite a bit. So he became a, a kind of, a, a, I guess, a sort of folklore. The notorious Chambers Brothers Gang of Detroit. Billy Joe, 26. White boy Rick was really, he became a friend of mine. But at first he was just a room. I heard a whole lot of talk about white boy Rick this, white boy Rick that. He would be at the mall with 15, 20 African Americans surrounding him and he got his gold chains. And eventually I had the opportunity to meet him. He invited me over to his house. He sent word through who? Yeah, he sent word to my friend Fats. He always sent word. Hey man, I would like to meet BJ. I would like to meet BJ, but I didn't have time. So this particular time, I made time for him since he had made sent me so many questions, requests to come and holler at him in Detroit. And uh, even though he was only 15, 16, 17 years old, 